what do you like about this painting and which is your favorite part and why? Yeah. For me, I'm drawn to the bees and the trees first because I have a personal concern about bees disappearing. So the way you've made them central to the painting for me is really touching me, but they're not so central that they removed from an environment. And I'm really interested that you've placed the trees next to the houses on blocks with blue behind it, because blue for me is open and, and reminds me of the sea, and it's sort of expansive. And the trees, the houses almost looks incidental to the painting, as if, as, as if we are a society that, um, that lives incidental to our environment. So what draws me to this is placing me in connection with the bees, in connection with nature, but in an expansive field of blue. And I love that because it makes me want to expand and want to notice the bees on the trees. Almost divorced from nature, but 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 in an expansive setting. So there's sort of like a juxtaposition for me of bees divorced from nature but in an expansive possibility. That's it. It's the thing about possibility that the blue does. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is your favorite group of houses? If you look at them, which two colours you like more can go together? For me the yellow and the blue. You mean yellow and a purple? A purple, yes. Yes. yes because it's so different, it's that um, unexpected, unexpected okay. colours together. Can you guess what each group of colours has got to do if you look in the colour wheel? Do they contrast? They across each other, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And tell me, why did you put the houses on the, on the, the green boxes? Well, green is some people's favorite color, and that means mounds with high views. Oh. It's the ocean. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. So in a way, the green is is is, is nature for you. In so front what's of the your ocean? ultimate dream as an artist? Where would you like to go as an artist? Uh, South what we do in France. Oh. And what is it about that place in France that it's attracts you? It's very big. Yeah. 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 So, is it about how would you feel when you exhibit there? Very different. Very? Different. Different? And what's that, that feeling? Is it about being acknowledged as an artist having reached excellence in their field? Or what is it about for you? It means in a busy place. In a busy place. With in more people. Okay. So, it's more people having access to your art and yes. sharing your art with the a more, large group of people. Yeah, the more, then the better. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Do you want to tell, <coughs> tell, uh, looking at the camera, tell me what you felt you say, when I went to Pompidou, sent to Centre Pompidou, I really loved the art. Tell, tell about the, what yeah. you went there. Yeah. yeah. When I went to Centre Pompidou, I really loved the art. I'll do it again, but louder <coughs> and clear. When I went to Centre Pompidou, I loved the art over there. In Centre Pompidou. One day I'll have an exhibition over there. Yeah, fantastic. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Well, I hope that the funders will yeah. provide s financial support okay. to artists like you will help you make your dream come true. Thanks. My yeah. name is Anik, right. and I have three beautiful children. One of them has a disability and is an amazing artist. And what keeps me going, what keeps me waking up every morning is the knowledge that he can get help to um, bring his amazing potential, not just to Hamilton, but to the world. I have devoted my life to help him fulfill his dream to exhibit one day in the Centre Pompidou in Paris, because I believe that he has an enormous potential to show the world. Anna came to visit me and explained to me her vision, and I was immediately taken by her vision. It is an inspiring vision for people with disabilities, for their families, for service providers, for Hamilton as a whole. Uh, and the dream that we want to share with you today is the one expressed by Anna, supported by Prima and Wintech. With Anna's leadership, 
there is an amazing opportunity to unify previously disparate funding applications into a program, a big vision for not just people with disabilities and their families and their service providers and their teachers, but also Hamilton as a community. And in order to explain to you what our vision is, we decided to take you to the Hamilton Garden. Let's see why. This part of the garden represents our pick and mix model. As you can see, there's many doorways, there's many openings and many entrance, entrances that this garden represents. And that's what we want to achieve for people with disability and mental health, to create a pick and mix, which is a range of art modalities together. Because we, we don't know and we don't want to presume that all the artists in Hamilton would want to paint or sculpt or do digital photography. So we want to create a model in which we represent as many of the art forms as possible that goes out to organisations and individuals who may never have explored an opportunity and may never know how good they could be in, an, in, an, in, an, in exploring an opportunity. If they walk through this door, which might be the painting door that they've never explored, they might find themselves 20 years in the future as the major best art seller in the world. Or they may want to taste sculpture and walk through that door. Or they may want to taste, I don't know, comic making. And it is in giving them a palette of explorations, many doors to walk through as an entrance to explore their creativity. And who knows where it will take them? Who knows where they would end up walking through that door or this one or this one? So this funding model is a pick and mix funding model where we say, here are all the possibilities. You choose, you tell us what you want. And then we create a workshop together and we facilitate an opening for you into a world of possibilities that you make and create what you want out of that entrance into almost an unknown possibility that you make known to you, like the fulfillment of a dream that you don't know what lies behind this doorway. You don't know what possibilities it can introduce you to, where it will take you nationally, internationally, regionally, to friendships, to community relationships that you never dreamt could ever have been possible. And this is what we want to give you. So this garden is a beautiful representation and a metaphor for what the formal art path indicates because these beautiful Egyptian statues and sculptures is in a completely different setting, divorced from their original culture. And yet each person who connects here in this garden with these sculptures bring their own meaning to these sculptures. It's not that the culture is represented through these sculptures is forcing you to embrace any particular cultural or formal knowledge of where these sculptures coming from. It just is an intimate connection, your connection with the sculpture that takes you on a journey. And that's what we want the formal art education path to represent. It's even though it's art in a formal, traditional educational setting, what we wanting to set up here is that each person who chooses to follow this formal education path does it in a traditional setting, but from a place of individual collaboration and participation to discover their voice, their medium, and to change themselves and the students the art students that they would work with to change each other's experience of art. And it culminates in an exhibition that they then share with others so that other people can celebrate the connection of people coming together in a traditional setting and yet in a collaborative, mutually explorative exploration of art. It's actually a celebration of art in an institution just like these sculptures here, it's a celebration of tradition in a non-traditional setting in a place called Hamilton in the Waikato, where this garden is about multiculturalism. It's about everyone is represented. Just 
as in, in this educational setting, everyone can be represented, everyone can work together collaboratively for the goal of exploration that could lead to formal pathways of employment, of pa formal pathways in education if you so choose, but it's also about leadership building. It's giving people with different abilities the opportunity to enter into a traditional setting to become community leaders like you and like me. So they're not excluded from because of their difference. They actually participating and bringing benefit to the people that they work with and together forming a unit of celebra celebrating art. This garden is a beautiful metaphor of different sectors coming together to celebrate a whole. So this funding application is about creating an artist's trail, an artist's studio. Now some of those studios may already exist and people may not know about them and individually each person is unique, just like the garden, each square is a unique square with different plants happening in a different growth. We want to create and support centres that's already existing in an art studio trail so that the individual student can choose to work one-on-one -on -one in this studio with a mosaic artist in that studio with a painter, in that studio with a sculptor, or that individual artist brings students to their centres as a group to celebrate and experience art together. But that there's an art trail walking through the Waikato, connecting centre to centre, person to the possibility of art in a separate centre, one-on-one -on -one or as a group. And we want that to be that Hamilton draws together its separate art studios in one art trail that forms a unique pathway for people with different abilities and mental health to select which pathway they want to walk in in the development of their art. We want all of the people in the Waikato to be drawn together so that they experience art as an integrated whole and have the opportunity in that centre to have no separation of boundaries between disability, ability, skill or non-skill, but that everybody can come together to grow together collaboratively in the exploration of art, but also in that centre to have, just like that fountain is the glorious expression of the whole garden bringing music to the garden through the sound of water and connecting each separate pathway. In that bringing everything together, the, the fountain stands as a metaphor of excellence. We want to also, in that centre, have a place where artists that, is already, that have already experienced themselves of, as artists in the Waikato can have a springboard into an international circuit, that into jobs, into employment, into self-employment, into recognition and excellence, so that they can stand as artists of excellence in their own right, fostered in this creative centre where everybody's ability, skill is embraced, where the Waikato works as one, not separate and isolated studios and artists on isolated paths, but the Waikato coming together in celebration of art. And we want this art space to represent everyone and to foster uniqueness and excellence. One of the amazing things of this beautiful Waikato Gardens is that you suddenly come upon the Waikato River, the river surrounding this beautiful garden and it flows people who would fund other men and women of the Waikato in their art exploration. We have no idea where this river would flow. It flows around the city, connect the city, and that's what we want with this funding, is that the benefits of men and women 
with disabilities, without disabilities, with mental health, without disabilities, that everybody comes together, integrated in one whole, and their talents, the benefits of their talents, flows internationally and enrich regionally, nationally, internationally. It touches everyone, like art. Art touches everyone. This art application for funding, it's about a vision. It's about a vision and a dream that a mother has for her child to exhibit in France, in Italy, in the Bahamas even. It's about a dream to foster each unique person's potential. And like in the Waikato is made up of men and women who all experience their different dreams and in the expression of their different dreams, some become salespeople, medical doctors, becomes engineers, becomes shop assistants, some become nurses. We want to foster a dream of people in the Waikato to access the arts. Currently, our dream is a visionary dream because in the world stage, it doesn't exist that traditional art education organizations opens their door to people with different abilities in mental health in celebration of their talent but it's more than that in our integrated art model that we want funded there is actually students faculty members principals managers of a traditional educational art model who wants to open its doors in celebration to say we want to learn from people who think differently. We want to learn from people who experience their world differently in the creation of art. And we don't want to dominate and we don't want to put hierarchies there. We want, don't want to put limitations there, but we want to learn in the exploration of art. That is unique. And one of the reasons this funding application is visionary, it doesn't exist anywhere that men and women in a traditional art education is saying, let's celebrate difference. Let's experience difference. Let's learn and grow from difference. And let's integrate difference. And the whole funding application, we want it to be inspiring. We want it to be about dreams and fostering dreams and we don't want to limit it by boundaries or say how it should be. One of the other reasons, like this garden here, these flowers doesn't ask permission to grow next to another flower. We don't want to see this funding application as asking for permission to grow. We want this funding application to ask for permission to flourish because the person themselves want to access different doorways like we've seen through this garden, different doorways of their expression. Not everybody wants to become painters, not everybody wants to become sculptors, but each person has a right to choose what they would like to become. These beautiful color flowers here are flowers in their own right and they stand out in their own uniqueness. And in their own uniqueness, all that they want is to be appreciated for their beauty. We want funding applications to appreciate people who are different in the expression of their abilities, to appreciate them and to give them an opportunity to flourish, to grow, to blossom, to share their unique colors to the world. And in sharing their contributions, their participation in art. They bring colorful spectrum to the whole that everybody who come to these gardens enjoy. We want everybody in the world to enjoy the different contributions that people with disabilities, with mental health, without disabilities, without mental health, that the community make to their own community. We want the, the contribution of this funding money to flow like the Waikato River and touch every country in the world to say, we in Hamilton celebrate difference. 
We in, ha in Hamilton appreciate difference. And we in Hamilton see each person's right to access their unique pathway into the arts, to have it lead to employment, to self-employment, to community employment, to be whatever it is they want to be, to just experience art as an expression of their emotions, as an expression of their pathway to wellness, as an expression of meeting friends, connecting to others, as an expression of belonging to a community. As, as an expression of finding their own voice, something that flows through them that we call life, and for them to participate in life. And that's what we're asking for, not for money, but the right of each person to participate in life in a way that's meaningful to them. And all the different funding applications are like this garden. They are little keyholes, little separate sections that says, if a person with disability, if it's important for them to make art in this way, we want to give them that option in a formal way, in an informal way, in a community way, as a group, as a community. We want art to transform because the message of art is that it transforms. It touches everyone. And there's no prescription how it touches people. You can't look at a painting and say, I'm exactly touched like you, but you can't stand in front of a painting and admire the fact that someone had an idea and they wanted that idea to touch everyone. We wanted funding so that, like this beautiful canvas of flowers, everybody in the community can stand in front of that canvas and appreciate its uniqueness, not its difference. in this beautiful Zen garden. We want, in this funding application, acknowledge the beautiful vision of the men and women of New Zealand who's created the New Zealand Disability Strategy. In that strategy, they want to achieve that each person with a disability live an ordinary life in which they belong to their community and they participate in their community through their own uniqueness, through what's important to them. And the whole disability strategy is about encouraging the community to think differently, to think differently in how they support each person with a disability and with mental health to live an ordinary life. And I would say an ordinary life in an extraordinary way because people with disabilities bring extraordinary ways in how they perceive life. And I want to acknowledge all the funding bodies with this, that has had this dream of enabling good lives. For me, enabling means facilitating an opening, an entry into a new life, a life that was previously not possible and supporting that life, not through hierarchy or through forcing, but through acknowledging each person's unique dreams, potentials, skills, and to facilitating opportunities for them to participate in a way that's important to them. So all our disparate funding models, we offer us one whole vision that you as the funding body could choose from. We, we encourage you to find the potential of your money, of your funding, and matching it to the part of the vision, our vision as a whole, that speaks to you. Which one speaks to you? Which one do you want to foster? Which one do you want to participate in to create an extraordinary life? for a person with ordinary skills and ordinary abilities to live, to live a life where they belong to their communities, they contribute to their communities, they foster their communities, they grow their communities, and the communities grow them so that together it's an integrated whole. As our vision do not want to exclude anybody, we see our vision as an integrated whole 
so that a person can enter to through any doorway that they want, individually, educationally, formally, informally, in a centre of exploration of the art and in a job of their choice and in a pathway towards their wellness. It's about integration at the deepest, most profound, most personal and most connected level because art is about transformation. In Prima and Wintech, Prima is the learning and innovation arm of Wintech, asking for funding from the organisations and separate organisations because we want to have lots of funding because this is a huge vision that we want to foster and a vision that we want to sustain far into the future so that when we grow people with disabilities and their participation in art, we want to grow them for many years.